have dreams, right? Mine were probably the same as most other girls I know. Like when I was little, I always used to dream about being a princess. You know, the sort. Rich and beautiful and having nothing more to do than let fate take its inevitable course. Help! Help! Is there no brief soul to hear my cries? Alas, I am doomed! <laughs> and, of course, just when all seemed lost, up would ride a handsome prince on his white charger, ready to pluck me from the brink of catastrophe. Fear not, fair maiden. Help is but a few steps away. What seems to be the problem? A wicked witch has bound me to this tree forever. Only a kiss from a prince, brave and true, may set me free. Then you're in luck, princess. Prince Guide of Blue Water. Answer to a maid's prayer, reasonable rates, conditions apply. Please, sire, I beg you, release me from this evil spell. No worries. Get a hold of yourself, Princess. This is going to be a life-changing moment. Ah, uh, lips together, we mustn't be unhygienic. Ah, of course. Oh, and you haven't been eating onion, garlic or any cheap processed foods, have you? Heavens no, no. My diet is entirely organic. But, just to reassure you... Truly, you cast all my doubts to the wind. I trust to you my fate entirely. And thank you, handsome prince. I am forever in your debt. Not a problem. Can I give you a lift? Ha. Ah. Thank you. But whither shall we go? Oh, I thought we might cruise into town, get married and live happily ever after. What do you say? You are indeed the answer to my maiden's prayer. Oh, I do my best. Then let us away and live a life together that is rich, glamorous and eternally happy. Ha. Ah. Sounds good to me. It was a great dream while it lasted, but after a while I came to the inevitable conclusion that being a princess wasn't really going to be an option. By age nine I'd moved on from fairy tales. I was now doing dance classes and I was a mad fan of those TV shows where people who danced became celebrities overnight. Naturally, my new dream was to become just like them. Like every girl I knew, I loved to dance. And like all my friends, I imagined myself as the one who had a really special talent. Picked out by the spotlight to shine like a star in front of hordes of doting admirers. Well, wasn't that simply sensational? A great disco finale in our search for the best dancers in the whole world. It certainly was, Byron, but unfortunately there can only be one winner. So let's see how they went. Jenny, Benny. A commendable performance, nice turns, good rhythm. But if I was to be completely candid, they just weren't good enough. What I wanted to see was Disco Inferno. What you gave me was Disco Crash and Burner. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest here. You were hopeless. How you got this far in the competition is really beyond me. Zero points. <laughs> Millie, Billy. Well, you two certainly tried your best. But I've got to say, if that's your best, I would hate to see your worst. I was hoping for Boogie Wonderland, and all you gave me was Boogie Blenderland. <laughs> I gotta say, you two were pathetic. As far as dancers go, you two will make great plumbers. Minus 10. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Which brings us, Byron, to our final couple. Right, Bree, but what a couple. Guy, Bridget, you guys were... 
amazing. That's probably the best dancing I've seen anywhere in the world in the past 10 years. Oh, Byron, make that the past 50 years. Why not, Guy, and especially you, Bridget. You both got so much talent, nobody on the planet can come anywhere near you. I'm giving you, oh, 10 million points. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Guy and Bridget. You two are the best dancers in the whole world! As you're no doubt beginning to pick up, I did tend to go over the top a little bit with my fantasies, but if you think that was extreme, it was nothing compared to when I was 12 and desperate to become the world's top supermodel. Don't worry, I'll spare you the details on that one. My next really big dream came when I was 14. That's when all I could think of was to become one thing, the world's greatest girl hip-hop artist. Now listen here, y'all, I'm telling you, man, this girl right here, I'm a number one fan. Whoa, Yo, whoa. I'm that girl, so get on my bus. Can't you see? I'm a genius. OK, great, guys, that's the wrap. Whew. Bridget Sanchez? Yeah? That hip-hop of yours? is the coolest and most amazing hip hop that I've ever heard. You are unbelievable, isn't she, Miss Flatwood? Absolutely unbelievable. Gee, really? Oh, yeah. And I'm here to offer you the deal of a lifetime. Your very own recording contract. If you sign this, you will be a world famous, multi-millionaire teen idol. That is so cool. Of course, you will have to leave your crew here. They're great kids, but Right, Miss Flatwood. Definitely. I'm sorry, guys. Even though I'll be a world famous multi millionaire teen idol, I'll never forget you guys. It's okay, Bridget. We're just happy for you. I wish you hadn't said that, guy. How can I leave such true and loyal friends? You have to. You're the best hip hop artist in history. You're on your way to the top, and nothing will stop you. There you have them, the dreams of my childhood. Silly, unreal and hugely self-centred, yes. But are anyone's dreams really that different? Though the funny thing was that while I was doing all this fantasising, the one thing that I got really good at, I never dreamt about at all. I just did it. Surfing was something I just kind of fell into. My three brothers did it and so I did it too. Now I dream about being a top surfer. Not in the same way that I dreamed about earlier stuff. They were fantasies I knew were never going to happen. But getting on the pro circuit is a dream that has become my goal. And who knows, hard work and a bit of luck, and I might just make it. But there was another part to my dreams, a part that had been there ever since I imagined myself as a princess. I never really thought much about it, but things happened this week that would make me think about very little else. All right, mate. Yes, sure, no worries. Well, come on, you lot, it's your long lost friend time. Oh, no way! <laughs> How are you, man? Good. What are you good. doing here already? Hey, oh, I couldn't wait to come back to annoy you guys. Charlie! Hey, Cass. <laughs> oh, Bridget. Hey. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I'm so glad to see you too. What is all the fuss about out here? Hey, don't blame me. I wanted this to be low key. Hey, where's Lauren? She'll be devastated she's not here. Did she know you were coming back today? Oh, well, I didn't know until last night. As soon as the doctor gave me the go, I caught the first flight here this morning. Well, she's outside cleaning her boards. I'll go get her for you. No, no, it's cool. I'll go surprise her. OK. You missed the spot. It's true, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> I've missed you so much. Seeing Lauren and Charlie reminded me that in all my dreams there was always a Prince Charming. I don't know why that was. Too many fairy tales, maybe. Too much TV. But whatever the reason, he was always there and I'd always expected him to be there. It was like you had to have a Prince Charming around, otherwise you were missing out. And let's face it, it was kind of nice having your own special partner to share stuff with. Come on, we're going to be late. Coming! For a start, having a Prince Charming meant there was always someone to look out for you. Yeah, I'll take your bag down for you, OK? Oh, wait, wait, wait. It also meant having someone there to share the load. How much stuff do you have? To help out if things got difficult. Thank you. I'll meet you downstairs, OK? OK, cool. Wait, promise. Most of all, though, having a Prince Charming meant that you had someone to hang out with. 
If you had a prince, then that made you a princess. And like lots of girls, part of me still wanted that as much as anything. Oh, hey, I've got to go, so I'll see you soon. Sure. Bye. But lately, things had started to become complicated. First, because the more you get to know people, hey, the more you realise that it's impossible for one person to be the perfect fairy tale prince. Second, the more you get to know yourself, the more you realise you're not exactly the perfect fairy tale princess either. I mean, whoever read about a princess washing her hands after going to the toilet? Princesses don't even use toilets. My basic humanity was bringing me to Earth with a crunch. So if we can't be perfect princesses, and there's no perfect prince, where does that leave things? And what happens to the dream when another complication enters the picture? Hey, Bridget. Oh, hi, Patrick. Um, here's that book of short stories I told you about. Oh, great, thanks. The ones by Forster are the best, I think. No, I really like him. You know they just made a, a movie out of his novel? You're kidding, when? Oh, well, it's, it's only just been released. Um, I'm going into town to see it on Saturday night. You're welcome to come if you'd like. Oh, thanks. That's really nice of you to offer. <laughs> so is that a yeah, yes or...? Uh, I'd really like to. I'm just going to have to run it past the Surf Academy because they like to organise stuff for us on the weekends. OK, no problems. Well, um, my number's in the cover, so if you can come, just uh, give me a call. OK, great, thanks. Okay, cool. All right, I'll see you later. I don't know how it was in other years at Solar Blue, but this year the six of us had somehow all paired off together. Lauren and Charlie were definitely together. Adam and Cassie too. But what about me and Guy? I really like Guy, even though we're as different as chalk and cheese. But does that mean he should be the only prince in my life? Or that I should be the only princess in his? Oh, hey, when I was driving back from Gary, I saw they've reopened the bowling alley in town. Awesome. Oh, do I sense a challenge coming on challenge? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you guys say? Excellent idea. I need something to beat you guys oh, at. Oh, as <laughs> if. You <Weird>. wish. <laughs> so what do you reckon? This Saturday night? Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So are we counting you in as well? Um, I don't know. I'm not really much of a bowler. Oh, don't let that phase you. As far as I know, none of us are. It's just a bit of fun. Yeah, I'll have a think about it. Are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? Oh, I don't know. You're just normally pretty keen to jump into these things. I really will have a think about it, I promise. Cool. We had an exam that morning, and for the first time in living memory, I found it hard to concentrate. I don't know why, but my conscience was getting to me. The one thing I always try to do is tell the truth. And while I hadn't actually lied to Guy today, I hadn't been straight either. Hands down, please. You know the drill. Turn your papers over and leave them face down on the desk. Thank you, class. You may go. As soon as I could, I decided to tell Guy that I couldn't go bowling because I wanted to see that film. Do you guys know where Guy is? No, I haven't seen him. We thought he was with you. No worries, I'll track him down. It's not like Patrick and I were together or anything. I just wanted to make sure Guy understood and that everything was clear and open between us. How is it the one minute everything in the world seems crystal clear and you know exactly where you stand? Then suddenly the whole world turns upside down. I didn't believe what I was seeing. Even more so, I didn't believe what I was feeling. To my own astonishment, I suddenly felt jealous. So let's just go over what's happened here. The guy that I'd sort of paired off with was about to be told by me that he wasn't my Prince Charming. Kind of. At least not all the time. Then I discover that he's found himself another princess anyway. Now, logic says that I should be happy about this because that's what I wanted. But logic's gone missing. Instead, I feel really hurt. Is it the world that's stupid or is it just me? Don't answer that. The leash is off today, guys. No specific training drills. I just want to see some good free surfing. Yes. Yeah! Yeah! Right. Charlie, now remember to take it easy, OK? We only just got you back. I don't want to lose you again. Yeah, of course. Guys, I feel some sick aerials coming <laughs> on. Woo! <laughs> this afternoon? Yeah, why not? It's not every day you get a freebie from Boots Sergeant Gary. And that's all it is? What more do you need? 
Hey, the guy said you're looking for me at lunchtime. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's nothing important. Where were you, anyway? I was just up at the canteen. I'm surprised you didn't see me. Who were you with? Anyone interesting? Not really. Come on, these waves are seriously going to waste out here. Did you hear that? He said she wasn't interesting, when it was obvious they were having a great time together. How could he possibly lie to me like that? Step on it, Bridget! Be ready for the old folks home if you wait any longer. What's the matter with Bridget today? Looks to me like a decided lack of motivation. Well, is anything troubling her? Oh, they had an exam this morning. She's probably beating herself up because she'll only get 99% instead of 100. This is ridiculous. I'm the one who's supposed to be calm and rational, right? So why am I totally uncalm with a brain out of control? Come on, Bridget, get over it. Did not look good. God! Check the bridge, it's all right. I'm fine. I wasn't concentrating and didn't feel my leg cramp up. Oh, well, it's probably not the first time and it definitely won't be the last. I think it might be enough for one day anyway. I think you're right. Thanks for helping. I feel like such a dork. Oh, don't worry about it. I'm always ready to help out a maiden in distress. What? Well, you haven't heard that saying before. Yeah, no, I have. Sorry, my brain's gone. Oh, that's all right. I'm sure mine would too, but it's been dumped like that. Come on, let's get you up to the house. Go on, Princess. I know it's just coincidence, but it's still kind of freaky. After everything that happened today, Guy not only rides to my rescue, but it's like he's got inside my head and latched onto my silly secret dream speak. Whatever way you look at it, it was time we talked. Like, really, properly talked. Hey. Mind if I come in? Now, why would I mind that? I thought you might have had enough of me for one day. And whatever gave you that dopey idea? Well, it's kind of been my day for dopey ideas. That's good. At least it's a change from me being the one who has them. <laughs> you okay? Guy, are we together? I don't know, are we? I'm not sure. I mean, everyone else has paired off, definitely. And sometimes I think we have to. And then sometimes I think the only reason we've paired off is because we're the only ones left over, you know? Kind of like by default, sort of. I'm not really making all that much sense, am I? No, 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 you are. I completely understand what you're saying. Really? Phew, at least we both know what we're talking about. So what do you think? I don't know. What do you think? I asked you first. <laughs> okay, well, I like you a lot. And I'm really happy hanging out with you. Same here. But if you want to see other people do other things, is that what you want? Maybe, from time to time. What do you think? I think that sounds like a good idea. So you're not upset? Not at all. I was kind of thinking the same thing. I just. I didn't really know how to say it. Honestly? Yeah, honestly. <laughs> I am so glad you feel that way. Although I do have to say I was a little bit jealous seeing you with that girl today. What girl? You were sitting with her at lunch near the canteen. Oh, Linda Simpkin, you saw us. Why don't you come say hi? 
kind of looked like a private conversation. Oh, no, no, no. Her dad owns the bowling alley. I was trying to talk her way into getting us a discount. You what? Well, a boy's got to do what a boy's got to do. <laughs> we can still hang out, though, can't we? Yeah, of course. <clears throat> um, dinner's in five, guys. <clears throat> On our way. So, this Linda Simpkin, is she nice? What do you care? We're just friends, remember? Well, as your friend, I think I should be concerned about your welfare, shouldn't I? <laughs> well, in that case, yeah, she's nice. And if she gets us that discount, she's very nice. You're shameless. Oh, you do know that, well, don't you? I'm working on it. If I'm honest, I have to say the change from being someone's girlfriend to being simply their friend felt a little sad. But if I'm completely honest, I have to say that after a few days, I started to really like the idea. Patrick. Hey, Bridget, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, I'm right to go to that movie on Saturday if you still wanted to go. Yeah, great, OK. Uh, I can stop by your place about six-ish and pick you up. Is that all right? Yeah, cool. Six. OK. All right. OK. Bye. See ya. OK, seeing as we're talking about honesty here, I'd be lying if I didn't admit that I was still a little bit jealous of Guy's friendship with Linda. But I know you can't have your cake and eat it too, so I just have to get over it. Is everything OK between you and Guy? Actually, it's better than ever. It is? Yeah, we had a chat and decided that as much as we like each other, we're happy to just stay friends. And you're both cool with that? Totally. OK, so what happens when we all go out together? Well, I, I guess sometimes one of us will come, sometimes both of us will. Sometimes we might bring someone else, if that's OK with you guys. Sure, whatever you want. Wow, you two really got yourselves organised. Yeah, well, that's this week's plan. Ask me next week and it might be totally different. <laughs> In the end, any doubts I had about things soon fell away. Schoolwork, surfing, you name it. <laughs> I was back to focusing on things the way I always had. So after a lifetime of having Prince Charming ride into my dreams, I'd now got to the point where suddenly I wasn't depending on him anymore. Not that I didn't want to meet up with him one day. It's just that now I had different dreams and I knew to make them come true, I'd have to pursue them on my own. Stop! Stop! What's the matter? I'm sorry, dear Prince, but I must take my leave. But we've just begun our journey. Our whole lives are ahead of us. Alas, that's the problem. You've lost me, Princess, so don't follow. And nor do I. To follow is antithetical to my nature. What's that supposed to mean? Well, there's just so much to do. There's university to attend, there's job options to canvas, there's the whole wide world to travel and explore. The truth is, dear Prince, that I must take my leave and make my own way. Oh, but think of the risks. It's a very rocky road ahead, Princess. Dangers lurk at every turn. Thieves, murderers, fake brands at inflated prices. It's a jungle out there. I know, but I must take courage and realise my full potential. Only then would I be ready to rejoin you. Oh, but that could take years. I can't wait around you now. What if I meet another princess? Then so be it. But we must each make our own course and take what chance may bring. And that's your final word? It is. Then I bid you farewell, princess. May good fortune favour you. And you too, good prince. And so the die was cast. All that remained was to take a deep breath and begin my trek along that road. It was a little scary at first, not knowing quite where it was leading, but I vowed to myself that having started, nothing would ever make me turn back. Ow! Oh yeah, I also vowed that at the very first opportunity, I'd buy myself some really sensible shoes. I mean, dreams are fine, but if I was going to chase them down, then my greatest ally would be some good, firm ankle support.